Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. I hope I can uh, inspire you uh, and with my innovation showcase. Um, I've been uh, running uh, Language Lab for about 14 months now, uh, and I like to think of us as a business as a true innovator uh, in this space. I have to say that uh, I concur with Benjamin having come from the media space, and when I landed in this sector about two, three years ago, I did find parts of it a little sleepy, I have to be honest, uh, but what I'm really encouraged by is this building uh, momentum uh, and certainly I see real movement. So uh, that's great. Um, when I, uh, I wanted to just concur a bit with, uh, with obviously with what uh, Charles has already eloquently um, um, expressed, I think today when most people hear the term e-learning, they're probably gonna think of something that looks a bit like that. It's basically pretty dull. It's not particularly engaging. It's about efficiency. It's about uh, gap fill. It's about a very sort of static uh, and obviously mainly asynchronous user experience. I think the, the key selling points um, of this type of solution have always been that it's cheaper uh, and it's on demand. Great. Uh, and I do think that part of the reason why that the e-learning sector in Europe has not really taken off as it should have done, notwithstanding all the, the, the structural uh, challenges, is that the, the core product experience is so poor and users are just not engaged by this experience. And I know from uh, a personal experience of having tried to sell our more innovative solution, when, as soon as you mention e-learning, this is what people think about. So from Language Lab's perspective, uh, as an innovator, we think that a truly engaging digital experience is really based on three key success factors. Um, this is not going to be the most revolutionary thing you will hear today, but I believe that really good quality teaching is at the core of education. You, you might not need to note that one down. Um, <laughs> This is, uh, this is a belief of Language Lab that what drives learning at the core is really well qualified, uh, engaging, enthusiastic teachers. These are some of our teachers, by the way. Um, the second part, uh, and very key uh, for us as a business working in the 3D space, is creating a user experience that is truly immersive, really genuinely engaging. I've used World of Warcraft deliberately, and it's certainly our aspiration uh, as a business to c create a user experience for the student, for the trainee, that is almost addictive, that really makes them want to engage, and that's what we, we really aspire towards. And it's about creating an experience that delivers learning uh, in context. The third key part, you've already heard uh, Benjamin and, and Charles mention this, is continual measurement and assessment. And that's something at, at Language Lab that, that we increase, increasingly obsess about. And particularly when you have a, a user proposition that looks a bit like a game, the way that you counter that is by data and proving that you are meeting and hitting uh, the learning outcomes. And it's the skill of bringing these three components together, in my opinion, that is what drives a really, truly compelling uh, user experience. And this is, this is where e-learning, in my opinion, needs to, to move towards uh, in the coming years. It's certainly the direction that we are pushing in. Just quickly back um, to uh, Language Lab and how we actually got to this point, uh, our illustrious founder, David Caskell, came up with the idea, it was a great idea, of how do you, um, how do you bring together this immersive world of gaming with language learning specifically. So over the course of the last few years, we have taught thousands of people from 120 different countries live in our interactive learning environment. And I think there's three things that came uh, very clearly out of that, that phase. We saw incredibly high learner engagement when compared to most other forms of online learning. 
For, so for language learning, we were typically getting 12 to 14 hours a month of language learning live, which is incredibly high when you compare it to others. We got very quick degrees of, of learner progress. So in the language learning field, we were often getting people up uh, the common European framework of reference, which is the, the core uh, measurement scale. We could get people up in 50 hours, when a lot of the other solutions, it would take you uh, 200 hours. And we also have successfully built up a really strong network of passionate, gifted teachers who are based all around the world. The two biggest challenges, though, uh, one was usability. Because we've been working on Second Life, Second Life, as you all know, is not a, ever designed as, a, as a, a, uh, a learning solution. So it was difficult trying to find a user experience that could work at scale. And secondly, I think we were challenged by uh, operating in the uh, consumer market space. So what I've done since I took over running the business was, was really push it down uh, you know, a new clear route, the first of which was to get off the current uh, Second Life platform as soon as possible and develop our own proprietary platform on a new technology using the Unity uh, game engine. And this was really about creating a platform that would allow Language Lab to deliver its own training using its own teachers, using its own content and its own environments, but also potentially offering it as a platform to some of the other key players in the sector, some of the education players, and also some of the big corporates to allow them to deliver their own training with their own trainers. We're now firmly focused on a, on a route which is about B2B. We've moved away from consumer. We can uh, leave that to Juan and uh, the other big players in the market. Um, we're obsessing about these measurable outcomes. How can we really genuinely prove that a learner is progressing and hitting those outcomes, continually feeding back progress? And then, uh, and this has been the, the big, really big plus for Language Lab over the course of the last year, is that we've, we've looked to dig deep into different sectors. And the first uh, sector that we, we targeted it was uh, not the result of six months of incredible detailed analysis, it was pretty obvious to us that the oil and gas sector was spending an awful lot of money, is spending a lot of money on training. And we felt that our solution was going to be perfectly matched and we've been proved right. So these, there's very clearly defined needs uh, uh, in this sector. They're looking to be able to get instruction to people in different locations, so on platforms in remote locations efficiently. They're looking for flexibility. They're looking to be able to deliver this training, this learning at times that match the schedules uh, of the people who are working on the rigs. Um, they're looking for scenario-based training that really matches the context in which um, the workers are um, operating on a daily basis. So very strong, obviously, health and safety uh, angle to that. And we can create those scenarios, both as standalone and, and live learning um, opportunities. And there's very clearly uh, an, an international context with all of these uh, platforms and onshore refineries. They're being operated by international workforces, but the common language uh, is, is always English. So can you bring together these different nationalities in one teaching space and replicate that um, uh, multinationality experience? Well, we can. Um, and we have done. So we've uh, had a, a very uh, interesting and, and rapidly growing partnership now with uh, a, a JV between the Kazakh government and uh, Chevron in Kazakhstan. Uh, I never thought I would spend so much of my life in, in this country, but I'm growing to like it and the taste of horse meat. Uh, um, so we've been teaching uh, 400 uh, Kazakhstanis over the course of the last eight months. We've been teaching them in a virtual environment that replicates the, the type of working environment they're working in. So we have operational environments, so we have the, uh, a replication of the Tengiz oil field, and then we'll, then we'll have business context uh, environments for the people who are working in the, in the core central functions like HR or, or logistics. And we're teaching 
a combination of, of three programs. We're teaching general English for people at a lower level to give them the four core skills, but particular emphasis on, on speaking and listening. Uh, we're teaching business English, uh, and then we're teaching a technical uh, oil and gas program that we've developed our, ourselves. So we're building our own content. And what we've seen, that eight months into the first year, we're already going to significantly expand uh, the, the amount of business we'll do with this client. And, and it slightly bucks the trend, I think, that uh, Charles was mentioning earlier. So we, we're probably going to go from a, a share of wallet in terms of e-learning versus tra traditional learning. We're going to go from 5%, probably up to 40 over the course of the next four months. So that's pretty significant. And the reason we've achieved that is that we have a very, very strong proposition that no one else is able to offer. So that's been a big plus. Now, I'm hoping to be able to show you uh, a video. Uh, our environments, oh, here we go. So this is just an example of a, of a teaching environment where we brought to life content in an interactive space. This is a, a class that's teaching about the Deepwater Horizon disaster. So we're combining content from the page and the written page uh, with okay. 3D models. Can anyone tell me what we're looking at right now? Is it a blowout preventer? That's right. It's a blowout preventer, or what we would call a BOP. A BOP is a large piece of heavy-duty equipment that sits on or near the top of an oil or gas well. Okay, so that's just a, a short clip, but it gives you an idea of how the interaction works. The interaction is live. The gentleman there is a trainer. He could be sitting anywhere around the world, and he's teaching in this avatar-driven uh, way. He's teaching students that could equally be sitting anywhere. They could be sitting on an oil platform. They could be sitting at home with their laptop. But the idea is that you're trying to combine this highly realistic 3D imagery of a blowout preventer, and then you're using content which is taken from a manual or from a book, could be proprietary content of, of the client or our own content, and then you're driving it via this live interaction. And one of the reasons why we've been so successful in, in Kazakhstan is that we've been able to source English teachers that have strong industry experience. So the voice of that particular gentleman uh, is a man who's worked as a drilling engineer for 25 years. So when he's in that class, he can relate to what's being said he can animate the class with his own examples um, and th this has really been uh, a, a very powerful uh, development for us the other space uh, where we've seen really good progress is in the higher education field it's obviously a, it's a it's a different uh, from from a business perspective the the sector specific tends to be more a game for us of margin whereas this higher education clearly is more of a, a game of scale um, but we've been uh, running a, a very successful pilot with a, a Turkish university called THK. It's a private university that's focused in the uh, aviation space. And we've taught 1,000 students over the course of the last seven months. Uh, and the reason why it's been successful is that it's very difficult for a lot of these uh, universities, countries like uh, Turkey, to get hold of native English-speaking teachers to actually teach in the classroom. It's incredibly difficult to replicate speaking and listening type exercises. So what we do is bring the people in, into our different environments and they get that fun, engaging, social type of interaction which you could never replicate um, in a classroom. So I've got a, a quick clip of that too, I can just show you. Do you sell apple? Yes, we do sell apple juice. Oh, yes, sorry. I meant apple juice. How much is it? 350 This is post the riots uh, in Turkey. It did say beer, but we've boarding changed boarding it to apple juice, obviously. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, guys. That was really good. Pedro, can you say this word again for me, please? Juice. Almost. Daria, can you help Pedro? How would you pronounce it? Juice. That's great. Pedro, can you say it again? Juice. Perfect. Great work, guys. 
Okay, so that's just a, a short example of how we're teaching in this, this Turkish university. And not surprisingly, we've had phenomenal feedback from the students. They just love it um, because it gives them the opportunity not only to interact amongst each other, but they've also been interacting with some of our other students. So next steps for us, we are charging ahead towards our new platform. We are forging ahead with new technology, which uh, we're aiming to take us into the cloud within the next 12 months. We're going to continue to specialize further, deepen our knowledge of those key sectors, because we think that's going to allow us to maintain uh, the best possible margins. And we're going to look at different business models, potentially offering a SaaS-type model once the uh, platform is launched. So that's it. Thank you very much uh, for listening.